What is up, y'all? Welcome to tonight's vlog. Guys, it is 6.42 and I'm vlogging, um, which is super unusual, but I'll explain why. Also, it's already dark outside because daylight savings time is a real thing. Um, so, yeah, so fun I'm saying. Also, my hair is dry, so it's starting to get screwed up. Um, the reason I'm vlogging early is because I'm going to see a movie tonight, and it's a Sunday night, and I'm seeing a movie at 8 o'clock, so I'm not going to be home until, like, 10.30 or 10.45. Um, and that's not a good time to vlog on a Sunday night, because I have school on Mondays. So, good times, man. Anyways, um, so, yeah, fun stuff. Okay, um, what's going on? What's going on? What do I talk about? Okay, um, so this morning before church... I met up at like 9.30. I think I told you guys yesterday I was going to do this. I met up with um, Hunter, the high school pastor, um, to kind of chat, talk about things. Um, and we basically went into a whole bunch of different theological discussions because what the hell else would I be doing with my life and my time? Look at me. I mean, come on. I upload YouTube videos about the gospel. So, yeah, anyways, um, I was introduced to... I need, like, a thing to Google stuff on, man. Um, Calvinism and, like, let me Google it. All right, so I don't remember the other word exactly. I think it's Arminianism, but I'm not sure because I didn't want to look at Google for too long. Um, so you've Calvinism and Arminianism, and it's kind of ironic that I don't remember Arminianism, which I'm pretty sure it is. I'm, like, 92% sure um, because that's the one that I'm probably going to go with, but we're not sure yet. Um, so I was introduced to this completely today. No idea... They existed. Well, I've heard of Calvinism before, but that was in, you know, like, um, history class in seventh grade. So we didn't actually go into, like, kind of doctrinal stuff and, you know, the actual Christian faith side of it. Just like, hey, this dude named Calvin wanted to do blah, 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 or whatever. I mean, I don't remember. It was seventh grade. Um, so Calvinism and Arminianism, I'm pretty sure. Um, and here's here's kind of the two ideas. Um, and I think that they're kind of based off salvation of... Uh, so the idea behind Calvinism is every there's this tulip acronym which you can look up look up Calvinism and it sends of stuff on both of them, um, but this is kind of a, a it's it's something that I can't do a weekly gospel on because I have no idea what on earth I'm talking about. Um, I just you know we talked about like you know maybe ten minutes this morning, so I I have a very very brief understanding and I you know he told me it's something very openly, widely debated between theologians um, and, I mean, just Christians alike. So it, it's not something I can just get a quick crash course on, 10 minutes, figure out what I what it is, choose my side. Okay, I am a boss, because, you know, people spend their careers figuring out if they're going to be a Calvinist or an Arminianist. They're not figuring it out, but, you know, choosing and defending and researching their site. So does that make sense? So, uh, Calvinism basically is, uh, the gist of it basically is the idea that God has pre-selected people from the beginning. He select, he divinely selects people that are going to be saved. And no, no matter what you want, no matter what you do, you've been saved by God's grace. God, you know, God says, okay, you, Michael, Michael, you, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing Michael ahead of time. Michael is going to be chosen, um, Michael is going to be chosen by me. He is going to inherit salvation no matter how much he tries to resist and how much he hates. The opportunities will be so prevalent in his life to accept the gospel. He will have no, cho no choice. You know, there's nothing you can do to escape the fact that in the end, he will choose me and he will be, he will go to heaven, you know. Um, I have chosen him and there's no arguments there. That's that side, and the other, the and I might be wrong about a lot of this. You guys can get a debate going in the comments or correct me in the comments because I'm going to just say right now, I'm probably wrong about some of this stuff because um, memory, I'm not good at it. Um, and then you have Arminianism, Arminianism, something, I don't, I mean, frankly, I don't really know. Um, and that's that's kind of more the, the free will, free choice side of things. So like, hey, God put this out there for everyone, Um God kind of died for everyone, and he wants you to come over, but it's up to you um, whether you want to go over to God's side or not go over to God's side. And there's also, you can be a four-point Calvinist or a five-point Calvinist, I'm counting. Um, and basically the difference is I'm pretty sure five-point Calvinism, that's kind of more extreme Calvinism, which there's nothing wrong with it, but um, that that's kind of the idea that, uh, what is that, I believe, that... Um, that, that people, some people have been ch selected 
that some people God has, you know, pre this is all predetermined, pre-selected. Some people God has pre-selected um, for salvation, and some people have been pre God has selected to not inherit salvation. Um, and then you can also be a four-point Calvinist where you don't necessarily believe in that, which I'm not too... I mean, all of this is brand new to me, so I just want to talk it out tonight. Um, and where I fall right now, I have a feeling this will change. You know, Hunter told me most of the people at my church are Calvinists, so kind of surprising that I'm, I'm not feeling the vibe. But um, from the way... From the reading I've done of the Bible, which is not anywhere near uh, Hunter, who has a master's degree, he's a... Well, I probably should it's like saying a political view right now. It's not. Um, he's a four point. Uh, he said he's a four point Calvinist, but he's kind of like and eh, because you know it's it's kind of a crazy subject. Um, and he has a master's Bible degree, so I'm not. I mean, my Bible knowledge is completely insuperior to his. Um, but from what I know, I feel like um, Arminianism or whatever it is, it, I. I I would go with that side for now, and I'm going to talk to people, you know, he kind of threw out some names of people like, um, that are, you know, really Calvinist. So I, I think I'm going to kind of talk, you know, maybe Wednesday, come pull, find some leaders and just, you know, that would know about this and ask like, hey, what's your view on this? I, I want to get a few opinions. Um, but for right now, just, I, I the strong argument um, that is against Calvinism is if there are if there are predetermined, you know, if people are predetermined, pre-selected um, to inherit salvation, there's nothing you can do, um, then that means that Jesus didn't really die on the cross for everyone's sins. He died on the cross for the people's sins. That that was absolutely 100% a business call. Um, not really. Um, what was I talking about? Something? I don't know. Um, so kind of... Calvinism, I know I was talking about Calvinism, I don't just, just don't know what I was saying. Jesus, it, it, it kind of puts in there the biggest argument against it is that Jesus would have died on the cross for technically only the people's sins that had been pre-selected by God to accept him. And, um, which, I mean, d does anyone like the sound of that? Jesus died for a few people, but not a, and you know, uh, a clear argument that, you know, a, a verse that would unsupport Calvinism would be um, John 3.16, the most famous Bible verse of all. Uh, for God so loved the world. God, yeah, God didn't, uh, it doesn't say, you know, God so loved Michael. God so loved Michael and his friends. God so loved um, 2.68 billion people. God so loved this set group of people that have been predetermined to inherit salvation. No, it said God so loved the world. So... Where, where does, you know, pre-choosing stuff like that come in? And um, there's also, I mean, I, I asked them just to clear it up. There's verses that don't support um, Arminianism either, um, which is to be expected because, you know, either, I, you know, if there was one that was unsupported and the other one was completely supported, it'd be like, why wouldn't you go with that one? See, you know, Arminianism isn't completely supported biblically either. Um, but from my very brief knowledge, um of of the topics i'm gonna go ahead and go with right right now our medina so i'm gonna talk about to, with about it with people this week and probably wind up doing my own, my own research i think it's a really interesting topic um but you know we'll, we'll see maybe talk to some church elders just about you know what's going on um i want to get a lot of opinions and i hate reading so i'll probably actually wind up going in and talking to some pastors about it because it's a lot more fun to have people talk to you than to read Ugh. um so yeah that's what's going on um but you know arminianism arminianism is there's the door example which i haven't told you guys i'm going to tell you guys right now on the worth with calvinism got you know there's a door god opens the door and he pulls you through he pulls you through the other side you are now saved there is absolutely nothing you can do you are here Bam, I just close the door, or, you know, pull out everyone. You guys are all saved. Close the door. There's nothing you can do to get out of here. So that's basically like you cannot lose your salvation. Nothing you can do can make you lose that salvation that God has, uh, that you have, I can't say earned, um, inherited, you know, gained. Gained, that's a great word. Um, and then the other example is God opens the door. Guys, you can come in. I, you guys should really come in. It's really nice over here on this side. Got the ACM, you know. Um, so kind of the, you know, that 
Everyone has a free choice. Anyone can come in if they want to, but is everyone going to come in? No. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's kind of what's going on. So, I just, I don't know. From what I've learned, um, and I, I, there's a lot of other questions that I've had in my kind of like faith history where the answer has been, you know, kind of related to free will. So, I've had to sit down and ponder free will a lot. So for this, for, for a side to go with free will more than God has chosen this already, um, kind of makes more sense to me because, you know, just kind of the whole idea of man's sin and everything, like, that that's not God's choice, um, right? God God doesn't want everyone um, to be separated from him. So you kind of have to put free will, the free will factor in there, and I think most Christians are more than willing to do that. Um so it just uh, for me right now it's making more sense to me um to say like um yeah free will because also just it, it's just it, if doesn't it kind of feel kind of wrong to to stand over here and say like yeah God didn't choose you like hey you're going to get exposed to the gospel and everything but God did actually didn't choose pre choose you predetermine you to get salvation so yeah there's nothing you can do to get it um you're just going to have to I know there's also, I think, one of the other points of four-point Calvinism, which um, is a very good point, is some people are predetermined to guarantee get it, and then everyone else has the choice, which is kind of the, brings up, like, why can't ever, like, why are some people selected and some people have a choice, you know, that, that doesn't really make much sense to me, um, I think you're either going to go black or white, it's either everyone is either chosen to have it or not have it or everyone gets a choice you know it's not going to be like oh some people are, are are guaranteed to have it some people i mean they they can they can inherit salvation if they want to but no one's guaranteed to knock it you know i just i don't like that categorization um but anyways i mean that's just that's just what i'm assuming kind of what i'm remembering from today so anyways good talk calvinism versus the other word um, anyways, I'm really excited. I have no idea what the hell Thor is about, but I know he has a hammer. Um, uh, but we're picking up Phil. We're going to go see that soon. Um, good times, man. Good times. All right. Um, feel free, man. I always tell you guys to share your opinion in the comment section down below. Look, an actual thing you can have an opinion on. Yes. Um, so, man, if you guys want to go down and drop down in the comment section, um, just share your opinion. What's going on, man? Um, I'm more than how I, you, you guys know I read all your comments and I would really, this is, um, an area where I, like I've said, I have no knowledge. I don't have very extensive knowledge on, so I would be, um, super thrilled. Um, I know a lot of you guys are, are a lot further on in your faith than me. So I would love to hear, um, other people's views, um, for, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys, um, that are more involved with the church and further on in your faith. These are things that you guys have all thought about and probably discussed and really, um, you know, had to sit down and make up your mind on. So, um, if you guys have an opinion on this, um, or just want to, you know, maybe it's not even a strong opinion, you just want to share your input, I'd love to hear your input in the comment section, um, just about kind of, you know, your take, all the things that I got wrong, because I'm sure I got a lot of stuff wrong, this was all from memory, horrible memory, um, but just kind of share, you know, um, uh, some of the, some of the pros of, you know, just what's going on, you guys get it, hope you all enjoyed today's video, if you did enjoy it, like it, if you didn't dislike it, feel free to share your opinion in the comments below, and I'll see you next time, guys, bye, bye, bye.